Hi guys and girls, I'm just coming up to seven months since my hair transplant in Turkey. Um, I thought I'd make a video, I think it's next week it's the actual seven months, but I'm going to be quite busy so I thought I'd make a video now. Um, as some of you can see, since my last vid I've had my hair cut a little bit. I think I did two on the sides and back and I think it was six on top, a short six. Some of you are saying my hair before was like a mushroom where it was short on the sides and back, really short and quite long on top. The reason for that was it was long on top because I was following the doctor's orders, I'd not cut it um, in six months, it's actually six and a half months when I cut it. And the sides and the back, the reason I shaved it so short was because I wanted you to see, you know, that there's no scarring, no over harvesting on the sides and the back, the donor area. So yeah, it's a bit shorter now. Um, I don't think it looks too bad. I'm happy with the results so far, you know, seven months and I've got hair. Just looking at my notes. Some people say about, you know, the hairline, it's, they use single hairs, uh, grafts with single hairs, which before I never really thought too much about this, but the reason they do this is it, it looks more natural. I think if you look really carefully around about there, there's one that I think might be a double hair graft, and it just looks darker and it's basically where the graft is, you get two hairs springing out instead of just one. So, you know, one might have got through, but you know, it looks fine, I'm happy with that. But yeah, that is why they use single hairs at the front because it gives you a good hairline and it looks natural. If you had loads of double hairs, it would kind of look a bit weird. Um, they use the double and triple and quadruple ones for the top and the, the back, the crown area. This morning I washed the hair and then I put some of my minoxidil, at the moment I'm using this Regain, which I got off Amazon, which will be listed below. This is the foam. If you remember before, I was using the solution. Now the foam, to me, still is quite a greasy product, same as the solution, but it probably dries a little bit quicker and sort of rubs in. And a lot of guys use it to sort of style their hair. So my hair today looks a slightly sort of wetter look than what it normally does. The reason for this was A, I put some conditioner on, and B, using the Regain to style your hair, it it does kind of give it a bit of a wet look. The only thing I'd say with this is if you've had your hair done and you want to make it look as dense as possible, having the wet look or a gel or whatever, if you if you have it sort of a wet look, it, you probably can see through the hair more because they kind of stick together. So if you want to make it look maximum density, you know, try and go for a drier look and use, you know, I've got that Gents of London styling clay. That's That works better for styling, I find, because it's less wet looking. People keep saying to me about what shampoo are you using, what conditioner. I've used expensive ones, cheap ones, and there's not tons of difference. You know, you're never gonna grow your hair. Um, it may make it a bit stronger one over the other, but you're never gonna, if you're bald, you're not gonna get your hair back, basically, by swapping shampoo. I go for, at the moment, I'm just using this triple eight one, which is 95p from Home Bargains. I've also put a link down, because on Amazon you can buy, I think you can get quite a few for quite a good price on there. You sort of buy it in bulk. I'm just using this Tesco's coconut conditioner at the moment. I've used dear ones. I put some on my Amazon page that I wouldn't mind trying, but some are more expensive than others. I put things on there that I've normally tried. If I haven't tried it, it's things that have got good reviews and I'm thinking of trying. Yeah, this cheap Tesco's one, I just like the smell of coconut, so I use that. The other night, I used my castor oil. I wouldn't use this every time you wash your hair. Basically, I came back from the gym, put this on my hair, and it is majorly thick. I mean, it's, it is just like oil. Like you can see, it. it's majorly thick because um, it is oil, and you, you peel it on your hair, rub it in, leave it for say five minutes, then do your normal hair wash and wash it out in the shower. Um, I wouldn't use oil for like the first, until you, basically until you've got quite a bit of hair, because you know, I don't know if it's good for the scalp or whatever, but 
yeah, I didn't start using that till probably month four onwards. Right, I'll quickly go over with the camera and see if you can focus in. And I'll show you what I mean by it being slightly wet look. I don't know whether it's focused, but... always hard to tell because I can't obviously see the front screen of my camera so there we go that's um, how it's looking and yeah even the crown seems to be growing quite well I mean my hair's naturally kind of wavy um, and at the moment I feel it's a little bit too short on top but it's you know it does look a bit sort of wet still because of obviously washing it and putting the conditioner and the regain um, using that. I do myself kind of like the Kirkland Minoxidil I was using before the solution because with that you can use like the dropper and you can actually push it through your hair right onto the scalp right where you want it and the regain or the um, solution whatever Minoxidil you use I try and use it just on the ball patch at the back which is the crown area and the sort of top and maybe the widow's peaks at the sides there which is where basically the transplanted hair was just to try and speed it up a bit a lot of guys say that when they start using minoxidil some of their hair comes out and that's i think supposed to happen um, and it should grow back after but with me I, nothing seems to come out so maybe i'm just at the age now where it isn't gonna you know i've, I've reached my natural balding point and hopefully i'm not going to bald anymore yeah, I've got some notes just down here. A lot of guys have been saying to me, you know, I'm Norwood 7, should I have the hair transplant? My reaction to that is that they're, they're obsessed with this number, this Norwood number, and they say to me, what Norwood were you? And, and I say one thing, and they say, oh no, I think you were this. To me, that is just a number, you know? I knew that I was balding, I had a bald spot around the back, I had the widow's peaks, and it, you know, when they shaved the hair off for the operation, it really was. Quite, you could see it was quite a lot bolder than what it looked when you grow hair. When you've got hair, you don't look as bald, obviously, but when they shave it really short, that was kind of an eye-opener for me, just how bald I was actually going. So, this Norwood number, I wouldn't get too hung up on it. Obviously, if you're completely sort of bald on top, you've got kind of a nice donor area on the sides and back, um, You've got to have expectations, like even for me, I was thinking, you know, as long as they can kind of cover the bald spots, you can't see it as much, and I wasn't even gonna have the front done, but they said no go for it, and I'm glad I have now. So yeah, with the Norwood number, just, just have expectations, but you know, surely if, you may need, you probably will need two ops if you're completely sort of bald over the top. My advice would be, as long as you're happy, go for it, you know? If you have the first stop and they do the front and then maybe a year later do the back even if you don't have a full bushy head of hair surely you're going to be happier and more confident with you know what they come up with and also a lot of guys some don't even know what fibers are you know hair fibers that you can sprinkle on so surely if you've you're sort of very bald if they can give you a sort of head of hair you can use fibres then to make the hair look thicker. So I, I'd say, you know, go for it. If, or maybe just have the first stop. Then if you're happy with the re results of that, then after a year, go for a second one. Because, you know, if you're sat there sort of thinking forever, you know, I'm not, should I, shouldn't I, you're never going to be happy. And, and it's like people are frightened of going out there. It's, or, you know, having the op done. It's... You know, it's natural to be nervous, but you know, how long do you wait? I was going to wait till I was 50. I'm 44 now, and I was 43 when I had the operation. So I'm glad I went for it. And, I'm, you know, if I'd have waited another six years, is it going to make a difference? I, I would be, you know, losing out on these six years now that I've got hair. So I would say, you know, go for it. I'll, it's not my job to ever push anyone into anything like going for an op. It's up to you, of course. It's your hair, it's your life. But if you're really fed up, you you know, some guys write and say, you know, they're so depressed because of their hair and they don't know whether to go or not. You know, if you're that depressed, then, you know, go for it. 
what have you got to lose? If you've got the money, you know, obviously it's a lot cheaper in Turkey, pick a reputable clinic and, you know, you're not going to be any worse off really, are you? But yeah, just have a think about it. I know what it's like though, because every day I looked in the mirror and I was thinking, oh, I'm really fed up with how my hair's receding and the ball patch, the ball patch I was worried was just going to get bigger and bigger. So, you know, just, there is hope. I Before thinking about going to Turkey, I never would have thought I would ever have the money to get a hair transplant because it was so expensive in England. So yeah, I've literally, don't be obsessed with this Norwood number because it's just a scale on how bald you are. Yeah, even if they make you, like, give you a good front hairline, surely you're going to be more confident and happy. So I think the important thing is expectations. Don't become obsessed with every little part of your hair because there are guys as well that have got pretty good donor areas. They're not that bald, but they're literally obsessed with every single review of every clinic. And it's like they're almost looking for a negative review of a clinic just so they can rule that one out. People always write reviews if they've got something negative to say or criticize or whatever because that's just what they do whereas some people who've had great results just you'll never hear from them so if you look deep enough there's always going to be someone who's not quite as happy but you know maybe they're a really picky person so don't always go on reviews you know just if somewhere's got really good reviews just you're always going to find one that's not quite as happy for all clinics so just my advice would be pick one that's got generally pretty good reviews. So you you know, and at the end of the day, you've, like I said before, you've got to make that decision. If you know in the back of your mind you're going to be frightened, you're never going to go through with it, then forget about it because it will drive you mad otherwise. Like I said before, if you're frightened of going um, or having the op, take a friend. If you're that sort of frightened of going, just save up, even pay for your friend, because it won't cost you much more to have them stay in the hotel with you, and flights, depending when you go, you can get cheap flights. So yeah, my advice is to anyone, I'm happy with mine, but yeah, go for it. Yeah, some people are saying I'm still wearing fibres in these videos, I'm not wearing any fibres whatsoever, no concealer, nothing. I've, the only time I've worn fibre since the op was once on my birthday in March. I was going out for the night and I just put some on the bald spot around the back because at that time it hadn't grown. So I was waiting for it and I didn't want it showing through. That's about it really. I've, it's, yeah, it's sort of growing really well still. Like I said before, it's probably around about month four to five it started growing um, a lot more. And five to six, it's really started filling out well. Um, even the crown area, you know. Like I said before, as long as you've got over 50% of hair in an area, you shouldn't, it, it won't look completely full, but it won't look bald. So I'm happy with that. Happy overall. Um, I'm just banging my head on the wall here. It's a sloping roof, so if you see any blood coming down, let me know. As far as, oh, another one I keep getting this question is, on the donor area, people use a saying about the itching after the op. Well, mine was only really bad one evening and I bought this from, I think it was a place called HomeSense, they had it on special offer. It's called Aloe Green Tea Soothing Facial Mist. You can just sort of spray it, just to keep your hair moist. This one's sort of for your face, but it's still got the aloe vera for soothing. A lot of guys use saline spray, uh, which is like contact lens solution. I put a link below in my Amazon page for some saline and for some aloe vera sprays, which get pretty good reviews. So check those out if you want to buy something like that. Generally, when you have your package done in Turkey, they don't they you get the pills and also you get offered if you want to buy more pills. But the aloe vera and saline is just an extra you have to buy. You, you know, it doesn't come with the pack. And saline is for people who don't know it's like really sort of clean water. I think it's got slight salt in it and you use it for contact lenses. People who wear contact lenses, they, they wear that. What pills am I taking at the moment? Still taking the Expecia. Take one of them a day. Saw Palmetto. 
This one is 500 milligrams uh, extra strength. It's supposed to be 25% extract. Take one of those a day. Biotin 10,000 MCG. Take one of those a day. These are all listed in my Amazon page below. Sometimes people say, oh, they don't look the same. I don't always stick to the same brand. Because I've been taking them for quite a while now, I just listed the ones that I've taken or that I'm thinking of buying. I sometimes put them on there to remind myself so that next time I need some, I'll look into them if I see a good price and good reviews. Multivitamins, you can take any multivitamins really from Tesco's or wherever, but I get all mine off Amazon because you know they work out cheaper normally. I usually buy like a year's worth in one go. If the packaging looks different, sometimes they do change the packaging. Uh, what else am I taking? Omega free fish oils. I'm on the keto diet kind of during the week. I try and stick to low carbs at the moment and uh, I've lost one and a half stone since February when, I, when my appendix burst, I'm trying to lose a bit of weight. It's kind of more for that, but again, fish oil is good for your hair as well, so can't hurt. For my skin, I'm still taking the emu oil in the evening try and keep my skin clear and I take one called Bulldog in the morning. It's just like a moisturiser to try and keep your skin hydrated. Another thing that we don't always mention is drink water. You know, you should, you're always taught drink a lot of water and it's true, it really helps. Your skin, your hair, everything. So drink a lot of water. I'm drinking my protein at the moment. So I have a few, I mix that with water. So I have quite a few protein drinks, but yeah, Drink as many glasses of water as you can. Keeps the skin and your hair hydrated. But yeah, that's about it for now. Any questions, as always, just leave a comment below and I will try and get back to everyone who leaves comments. I've had people leaving some really weird comments. You know, I delete them. If, if you're having a go at me, then I just delete them. So it's up to you, but they don't get published, they get deleted. But any questions, please just ask. You can find my Amazon page below, which has got all of the links to uh, all my hair stuff and other stuff that I have, like people asking, you know, about books I'm reading, that sort of thing. They're all in there. That's about it, I think. If you don't want a public comment, so it's something that you just want to ask personally, then go on to um, Instagram and there's like a messenger on there. My Instagram page is linked below as well. So you can go on there and um, send a private message if you don't want it public. That's about it now. So month seven, all going well. Pretty happy overall, especially now the crown's starting to fill out. I've had a few people saying they don't believe that I, I've had my hair done. It's fake and, you know, my answer to that would be watch my other videos. You can see every month it isn't a wig. You know, I'm pulling my hair now. It's stuck in there. It's not, it's not fake. And as I said before, my hands are clean. I've got no fibers on there or you'd see them on my hands. Okay, any questions though, please ask. Cheers.